Here's what's coming up on your horizon. Well, today we're out of the studio and here in beautiful Woodland Park in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Just one of many renovation projects underway in this town of 31,000. We'll show you why Shawnee could be Oklahoma City's last frontier. We'll examine how education and industry have partnered to create a workforce to support over 70 diverse manufacturers in this area. We'll tell you why local residents hope to improve their quality of life by selling their local hospital. Austin Moore introduces us to a local businessman teaching life lessons learned the world away. And we end our day with a young professional who says you can have it all. Technology is our friend. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon on location in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by Career Tech. A job for every Oklahoman and a workforce for every company. With additional support from the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food and Forestry. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. I'm Rob McClendon. Well, today we are coming to you from the Aquatic Center in Shawnee, Oklahoma. A little more on this beautiful facility later in our show. But first I want you to think about this. As metropolitan areas tend to do, we've watched the Oklahoma City Metro expand into neighboring communities. First to the north to Edmond and Deer Creek, and then out west to El Reno and Yukon, then southward through Moore and Norman into Blanchard a growth that is now looking eastward, which could make Shawnee, Oklahoma City's last frontier. For 28 miles, continue on I-40 East. When you head east out of the Oklahoma City Metro on I-40, it's not long before you arrive in Shawnee. So you're coming east from Oklahoma City and Midwest City, you fairly quickly get into, into Shawnee, and there is uh, certainly uh, uh, room for uh, substantial expansion both uh, inside and immediately outside Shawnee city limits. An edge city with room to grow. Housing here is less expensive with 12 new subdivisions underway and population growth of 3% the past five years. We have a lot of people that work in Oklahoma City that live here. A lot of Tinker employees that like to live here, smaller town. Um, the taxes are a little different here, smaller schools, and it's a fairly easy commute. Carol Bass is a realtor in Shawnee and says average prices here range from eighty to $140,000, a bargain by almost any measure. Of course, we've got a lot of investors that come here too because we've got two universities here, we've got a hospital, so rental property is very, very profitable here. Almost 17,000 Shawnee residents commute west to earn their living, many at Tinker Air Force Base. Pay here is at a premium, and the demand for workers always growing. People like to, they like to live where they grew up. Ron Davis teaches aviation at Gordon Cooper Technology Center and says with the constant demand for aviation workers, his classes have a waiting list. Aviation is the number one economic engine in our state, even above oil, about over 12 billion annually, and in, employs more than 230,000 people uh, statewide in either direct or indirect jobs. We're, we're probably the best kept secret in the entire state <coughs> as far as our abilities. Now we don't we don't build airplanes here, but we sure fix them, and we fix a lot of them which is why these Tinker workers are back at Gordon Cooper Tech Center to further their training on a career that allows Shawnee residents to earn big city wages while enjoying small town life. Originally from Norman, I uh, wanted to buy some ground and uh, buy some cattle. Cleveland County couldn't afford it, so we found some good river puddle ground here in Pottawatomie County. And moved here 22 years ago. Randy Thomas now serves as county commissioner and says Shawnee is more than just a bedroom community. 
for Oklahoma City. Uh, we've got 200,000 people within a 40 minute drive of Shawnee. We are the only thing in between Midwest City and Fort Smith, Arkansas. So I want to put some stop gates there at I-40 and say, come to Shawnee. We've got the new marketplace going. We've got a Hobby Lobby. We're employing people. Uh, and people aren't having to drive to Oklahoma City and spend their tax dollars where they can do them right here in Shawnee, Oklahoma. So what happens is that a lot of people come in here to shop, go to school, do, do the things of life then. Absolutely. We're a regional hub, and so individuals, uh, particularly from, from surrounding rural communities to the north, south, and east, uh, choose Shawnee as their primary means to get uh, to do major shopping, to, to do health care, or perhaps education, and just general services. Mm -hmm. So what's to do here? There's quite a lot to do here, actually, for a small city. We have uh, several movie theaters. We also have, for a city our size, it's kind of surprising, but we have a, a mall. Uh, so we have a variety of uh, shopping opportunities. In terms of cultural opportunities, we have um, a variety of uh, there's tribal governments. We've got um, a cultural heritage center. Uh, we have, of course, the Expo Center. And then we have our Maybe Gear Museum, which is uh, um, located on the campus of St. Gregory's University. And of course, Oklahoma Baptist University also uh, brings us a lot of, uh, a lot of culture and, and activities, whether it be sporting events, or, or plays or musical performances. There are um, just a number of things to do, to do here. And then there are the jobs. Of Oklahoma's 77 counties, Pottawatomie regularly ranks in the top 10 in employment, which brings in people from several communities, but none further than Harmick Dershahakian. My family is in Los Angeles. My extended family is in Los Angeles. I've got two kids, there are 14, I've got twins. And it's not right for me to take them out of that environment because they're growing up with grandparents, aunts, uncles, and stuff like that. Der Shahakian easily wins the Longest Commute to Work Award. Comparing Shawnee to Oklahoma City or to Los Angeles, you're more in touch with the community. You can be more part of the community, okay? You can be proactive with the community. You can contribute to the community much better on a different levels than you could otherwise. Which makes Shawnee a town well worth the travel whether a little or a lot. Well, Shawnee's success has long been linked to transportation. Before there was the town of Shawnee, there was the Shawnee Trail, where Texas cattle drovers pushed their herds across Indian Territory on the market. Now, after the land run of 1891, one of the early settlers of Shawnee, Henry J. Beard, gave up half his claim to have a railway built through his farm, and the city of Shawnee was founded on Independence Day of 1895, and Shawnee soon became an agricultural hub with several rail lines serving farmers as they brought their crops to market. Today, the Santa Fe train depot still stands with its unique architecture of three foot thick limestone blocks and a 60 foot castle tower, serving as a visible reminder of the city's early dependence on the train. And right next door to the depot is the original cabin of early settlers, Henry and Etta Beard who must have had plenty of pioneering spirit in their blood because after helping found Shawnee, Henry and Etta went on to establish two other Oklahoma towns, one with their namesake, Henrietta, and the other after their daughter by the name of Ada. Now when we return, we look at the partnership between industry and education here in Shawnee. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon with Rob McClendon weekly insight into your changing world. Well, Shawnee is home to three Centennial manufacturers that can trace their heritage back over a century. Started by an Oklahoma homesteader, Shawnee Mills opened its doors in 1906 and is still operated by third and fourth generations of the family. Today, the food division of Shawnee Milling creates a variety of flour, cornmeal, and baking products but have never lost track of their roots. One of the reasons Shawnee Milling is one of the largest supporters of the Made in Oklahoma program. Well, as a major railroad hub, Shawnee's roundhouse overalls literally clothed America's western expansion. Today, Roundhouse is the largest all made in the USA jeans and overalls manufacturer, producing almost 300,000 units of Roundhouse American made jeans and overalls per year which takes about six miles of cloth per week and 12 million feet of thread a month. Now just down the road is Mills Machine Company, 
a leading U.S. manufacturer of earth drilling tools, bits, and related accessories. Backed by more than 100 years of experience, Mills Machine has earned a reputation as the driller's custom job shop, whether it be for water wells or a variety of industries. Chuck Mills is the company president. Manufacturing is where it all starts. I mean, everything else is a service. So if we're not making things, then we're not growing. And this state needs manufacturing. The United States needs manufacturing. You know, we have to compete with a lot of uh, global interests in the world. We compete with China and Europe and the Middle East and South America every single day. No longer do we think about our competition in the next state. Our competition is global. And it's in that global marketplace that many of Shawnee's local manufacturers are thriving thanks to a strong link between education and industry to create a globally competitive workforce. With more, here's our Blaine Singletary. At Gordon Cooper Technology Center's machining classroom, it's all about making. Not just gadgets and parts for them, but also making future engineering professionals. Our job is to make sure that we're a prime mover in providing workforce for our business and industry in the region, and we take that very seriously. That's Marty Lewis, superintendent of Gordon Cooper. He says that this engineering program is important because engineering is such an important industry here. Very vibrant manufacturing within the Shawnee and, and points beyond Shawnee, Seminole, Chandler, uh, et cetera. A lot of manufacturing that's going on there. Machining is one of our prime programs. As these machines and instructors churn out and cultivate fresh new talent, the economy of this region grows too, and the numbers don't lie. We turn out typically about 40 students annually to Tinker Air Force Base as new mechanics, and we're also right now training about 60 Tinker workers uh, and giving them the skills that they need to kind of move up the uh, uh, salary uh, level. Whether it's aviation or any other kind of engineering, the programs at Gordon Cooper Tech can help students' careers really take off. Having the skill allows you to be able to go out into the workforce and compete for jobs that just not anybody can go out and do. Elliot Schuler teaches precision machining, which gives students the knowledge to operate conventional and computerized numerical control machines. Most places want a certificate saying that I've been through an accredited machining program, that I have credentials, that if I put this young man or young woman on a multi-million dollar machine, that I have the confidence that they're going to be able to produce the parts that I want produced in a good amount of time with, re with good quality uh, and to be able to make me money in a manufacturing setting. Part of how they keep their program effective is through their partnerships. They work with high schools in the area, of course, but they've also teamed up with grade schools to get STEM in the minds of kids at an early age. And then there's arguably the most important piece of the puzzle, the manufacturing companies themselves. Again, Marty Lewis. We work closely with them. We make sure that the equipment that we have fits their needs. We make sure that the training that we're providing fits their needs. Everything that we do caters to those industries and what they need. And that's why when you step out of Gordon Cooper and into one of those partner companies, you might get a little feeling of deja vu. This is Central Plastics, a locally grown company that is now part of global manufacturing juggernaut George Fisher. Brian Lucas is the Vice President. Central Plastics has been a part of the Shawnee community now for almost 60 years. Our primary products focus on the distribution of natural gas and the distribution of water. Things have really been looking up for them in the past decade, mostly thanks to a continually strong housing market and the fact that a lot of America's pipes are, well, getting old. The infrastructure in the United States is, is entering its first phases of replacement. We're governed by the, by the federal government, so it's required to be changed out once it hits the end of its useful life. And so we're in a process now of, of changing out all of the old infrastructure throughout the United States. Those new replacement pipes get built right here. And with demand being very high, they need a lot more hands on deck. We, we run between five and 550 employees. Our primary focus is, is finding people that, that's, that's energetic and excited and wants to, wants to come to work and, and is interested in showing up at work every day. And while it's hard to attract hot, young talent from outside the area to this town of 30,000, 
That's where tech centers like Gordon Cooper come in, taking in interested local students and getting them started right after graduation with local jobs like the many at Central Plastics. We're probably one of the most diverse manufacturing facilities in the region. We have just about every manufacturing operation that you can employ at this facility. Through these talented instructors, these residents in this city of manufacturing can get to work. Again, Elliot Schuler. Nothing replaces hands-on learning, and we know what the manufacturers want, what they want their employees to have, and we replicate that. We help them uh, to be able to get the process down correctly. Horizon is at your fingertips. Join us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to catch the segments you may have missed and our latest new content as it happens. Well, it's certainly not all work and no play here in Shawnee. When it comes to entertainment, there's plenty to do. Shawnee is home to four area tribes that offer a wide range of entertainment options. The citizen Potawatomi Nation has recently opened new ball fields and a new event center. Now, the Firelight Grand Casino also brings a steady stream of entertainers on its main stage. Now, on a more sedate note, the Heart of Oklahoma Expo Center also is frequent host to any number of groups, including ag trade shows and equine events, and every summer is the host of the International Finals Youth Rodeo. Well, after all that excitement, a good place to cool off is right here at the Shawnee Aquatic Center. Originally built in the 1930s as a WPA project, this pool and splash bag got new life thanks to a forward-thinking effort that's designed to improve the quality of life for residents around the area. Throughout Shawnee's history, healthcare has been a cornerstone to this community's vitality. Healthcare is evolving, bigger is better, being a part of systems that can make the transition for, from fee-for-service to being paid to keep people healthy. Chuck Skilling is president of St. Anthony Shawnee and says when faced with an ever-evolving healthcare climate, the local hospital board made a bold move, selling Shawnee's community hospital to a nonprofit corporation. Closed the transaction July of, of 2012. Um, and as we did that, the board of directors that was running a hospital now became the board of a private trust. Called Avitas. It is a trust that serves the health and well-being and citizens of Pottawatomie County and the surrounding communities. Uh, and, and as such has in excess of $100 million to be able to promote health, wellness, and quality of life issues in Shawnee and the surrounding communities. Since its start, the Avitas Foundation has invested in initiatives that promote a healthy lifestyle. <laughs> $4.2 million renovation of the municipal pool to the start of a $1.3 million project to connect all of Shawnee with walking trails and sidewalks. I really like it when I'm, I'm driving at uh, 6.30 in the morning and it's dark and I see people running on the walking trail instead of in the street uh, and, and to see people take advantage of that. We've probably, I think we've donated, well, I know we've donated millions to educational projects throughout the county. Our hope is that that not only gives people a reason to move here, but it also gives people a reason to stay here. And so we have a number of individuals that obviously can, uh, can take jobs elsewhere, can move uh, anywhere around the state or around the nation. We also have uh, universities that are graduating, uh, so in some cases, um, uh, hundreds of students every year. And if we can keep some of those um, individuals here, uh, and grow the economy and, and, and our community uh, here. That's, that's what we're hoping for. Well, it is such quality of life issues that often attracts people to a community. And in the case of our next story, brings them back. Our Austin Moore introduces us to a local business owner who teaches life lessons he's learned around the globe. Chick-fil-A may be a national chain best known for their bovine pitchman, but if you stop by the store on Shawnee's Kickapoo Street, what you'll find is most definitely a family business. My wife Kathy and I work here full time. We have a daughter that works with us full time, a father-in-law, her mother, and then two other daughters that work with us as well. This is my okay. head for the day. Okay.
When you're looking for people to provide service and hospitality to other people, you're looking for somebody who can serve another person without expecting anything in return. Service that Jeff Madison learned about in his first career with the United States Army. He served tours in Iraq and Afghanistan before completing his service in the Pentagon. Overseas, he had focused on development, creating partnerships and learning the lessons of management in hostile conditions with an M4A1 rifle in his hand and a smile on his face. He brought these tough lessons of leadership home to Shawnee. Different people grow up with different backgrounds in a community like this. And so sometimes we want to come alongside young people who maybe didn't have a solid home life and partner with them to challenge them and ask them, where are you going in your life? What is it you're doing? And if they can't answer that question, we want to come alongside them and have a dialogue and maybe challenge them to try to figure out what that's going to be. You can't help but hear the wisdom game halfway around the world when Madison talks about his young employees. I tell my young workers, if I put you in charge of something small and you perform well, then, I'm, then I can see that I can rely on you to do something larger. And so once I put you in charge of that larger thing, it becomes the small thing from which if you perform well there, it'll catapult you onto the next big thing in your life. Got the napkins? For Madison, the question of what his next big thing was after the Pentagon was never really up for debate. This is home. So I was away for 25 years as a professional army officer, and this is where my roots are. And all along, when I was in Iraq, Afghanistan, Germany, Korea, I always felt this longing to come back here. Because this community is part of Jeff Madison, something that fills him with great pride. Good morning, how you doing? Our guests that come in here, we see them at church, we see them at the university, we see them at the Chamber of Commerce. You, you get to know people on a much uh, closer personal level as a result of the community that we're talking about here. But it's a town that's going somewhere, okay? It's, it's striving to have its own identity. It's striving to meet the needs of the people in the community. Those who have things are sharing with those who don't. And as I traveled around the world to different countries like Iraq and Afghanistan, I saw those types of needs everywhere on the globe. And so it's, it's something you want to partner with, you want to get alongside of, you want to be a part of it. And when you can be back home with people you know, with your tribe, with your clan, you know, there's just something special about doing that. And there is indeed something special to be found in this Chick-fil-A. Want to see more stories like this? All our segments are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV. Well, while towns like Shawnee do offer a more relaxed way of life, thanks to technology, you can live away from the hustle and bustle of the big city while also pursuing your career goals. Our Courtney May introduces us to a Shawnee business owner who says you can have it all. It's a boutique in the front and a salon in the back. Rachel Milo is the owner of this Shawnee attraction called Whistle, and she says heartbreak led to her success. I actually went through a divorce in 2012, and at that time period, there was a particular small boutique here in town that a woman had owned, and she had gotten married and moved away, and so it was operating in a state that it needed love. And Milo says at the time, she had a lot of love to give. And through her boutique, she is able to mentor young entrepreneur hopefuls. All right, show me what you got. Okay, we have this one. I believe 100% that this is a facade for me to encourage women to be all that they wanna be. And Milo says Shawnee is the ideal location for business owners. Technology is our friend, right? And so I believe that companies and individuals who are uh, willing to use the, the latest and best technology, you really can work anywhere today. If you're wondering where the name Whistle came from, it's a tribute to Milo's 20 year officiating career. I'm now officiating almost full time in the winter 
doing uh, basketball games from coast to coast, um, Puerto Rico, uh, Cosmel Cancun, wherever that may be. And I, this year I worked even in the first round of the tournament for the NCAA tournament in Waco. And if two careers isn't enough, Milo also commutes to New York City, where she works in the media industry. What I do in New York is a job of relationships. Today, I work as a consultant to uh, traditional B2B trade publications and media houses to help them make their ad inventory available programmatically. But at the end of the day, Milo credits all of her successes to growing up in small town Oklahoma, a place that allows her to have big city dreams. Well, that is going to wrap us up for our time here in Shawnee, Oklahoma. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. I'm Ron McClendon. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you back here next week.